Welcome to Lecture Online. Now that we started talking about the covariance matrix, let's find out what it actually is. And it's actually not that foreign of an object to most of us, at least if we've seen standard deviation before. So let's say we have a bunch of values that we measure. Let's say we measure the length of an object, and we come up with some values such as uh, x equals uh, 2, x equals 5, x equals 4, x equals 5, x equals 3, and so forth. We get different values when we read something. Hopefully we're a little bit better than that to have something that disparate in nature, but that's okay, this is a good example. So we have five measurements, five different values, and so each individual value can be considered x sub i. So x sub i can represent 2, 5, 4, 5, and 3. The average of all these measurements would be adding them all up and dividing by the number of measurements we had. So add the 5 together, divide it by 5, and you get the average value for x. That's the mean or the average. If we then take the average and we subtract from that any one of these numbers, we get the difference from the average and the number that we're measuring. That's called the deviation from the average. How much does the value that you are measuring deviate from the average value? So that's called the deviation from the average. If we now square that amount, we now get the average value minus any one of the readings. Quantity squared, that's now called the square of deviation. If we now sum them all up, if we take the average and we subtract from that the first reading and we square that number, and then we take the average and subtract the second reading and we square that number, we take the average, subtract the third number and square that, we take the average, subtract the fourth number squared, and finally take the average and subtract the fifth reading and square that number and add them all up, and then we divide that by the number of readings, in this case n would be 5, that's then called the variance, that's where the variance comes from. The variance is actually the standard deviation squared because the definition of the standard deviation is to take the variance and take the square root of that. So if we square the standard deviation, we get the variance back. And so the variance is a larger number than the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a number that says that if you're plus or minus one standard deviation, about two-thirds of all the values are expected to fall within that range. But if you take the variance, which is the standard deviation squared, you expect almost 100% of the readings to fall within that plus or minus range. And so the variance is a much broader range from the mean than the standard deviation is. And what that means, and if we're going to use that in Kalman filtering, we just want to make sure that we open up the gates large enough to be able to say all the values we expect will fall within the variance. It gives us an idea of how wide the variation of the, read, of the values that we read in or the values that we estimate can be. Then we have something called the covariance. So let's say we not only take the length of an object, we also measure the width of the object. So let's say that y represents the width, and so the values there would be 4, y equals 3, y equals 2, y equals 4, and y equals 5. And we can do the same thing for the y value, for the width instead of the length. We can find the individual measurements, the average of the measurements, the deviation from the average, the square of the deviation, and finally the variance. However, the covariance is when we compare the error or the uncertainty or the variation of the one variable and the variation in the other variable together. In other words, if we take the, what we would call the deviation from the average, for the length and the deviation from the average for the width and we multiply them together and we do that for the first set of readings and then for the second set of readings and the third set of readings, the fourth set of readings and the fifth set of readings, so we do that five times, sum them all up, that will then be the covariance. Oh, one more thing though, I forgot to mention, we have to divide that by n because if we don't divide it by n, of course, we get an exaggerated value. So we do this five times, so we multiply the variance of the length times the variance of the width for each individual reading, the variance from the mean or the average for that particular reading. We multiply those together, divide by n, we then get the covariance. So we have the variance and the covariance. In the case that we have, for example, a one-dimensional example where there's only one variable, then of course the covariance represents the entire variation from the mean that we can experience, and we just get one element in the matrix. If we have a 2D situation where we're measuring both the length and the width, or the position and velocity, for example, then we would get the variance in the x direction, the variance in the y direction, and the covariance between the x and the y direction. Notice 
that the covariance, when you write the y first and then the x second, or the x first and the y second, you get the exact same value. So these cross what we call diagonal line elements in the, in the matrix end up being the same value because it doesn't matter which way you put first. And so instead of writing it like this, we can actually write it like this, where this is the variance in the x direction, this is the variance in the y direction, this is the covariance between the x and the y direction, this is the covariance between the y and the x direction. And remember again, x and y direction, that would be good for length and width, or this could also be position and velocity in the x and the y direction, or I mean, I mean it could be the position and velocity in the x direction, it could be the position and velocity in the y direction. If you combine them, then you end up with a four-dimensional matrix, and we'll show you later how to deal with something like that. A three-dimensional matrix, notice that along the diagonal line, you have what we call the, oh, yep, we have the squares there. So this would be the variance in the x direction, the variance in the y direction, the variance in the z direction. And then we have the, the covariances between x and y, x and z, and between z and y. So again, that is what a three-dimensional um, matrix would look like that has variances and covariances in them. Now you may say to yourself, well, what's, why did they call it a variance-covariance matrix? Well, the true name is indeed a variance and covariance matrix, but we usually call it variance matrix for short, or I should say covariance ma matrix for short. So when you hear the word covariance, really what they're saying is they're saying variance-covariance matrix, but for short we simply call it a covariance matrix. So now that you know what a covariance matrix is, you know the relationship between the standard deviation and the variance and covariances, we can then go ahead and start utilizing that. Maybe we'll do one more video on explaining the relationship between covariance or variance and standard deviation because it does have a specific meaning as to how wide a net we want to cast to catch all the potential uncertainties and errors in our measurements and what that means in the Kalman gain. So we'll do one more example, a video where we compare standard deviation to covariance and then we'll start utilizing that in some practical examples to see how we develop these matrices in order to come up with a Kalman gain. That's how we do that.